question. What's the typical response for a clinician who wants to know more about a colleague's skill level? It's not uncommon to hear a clinician use some version of the phrase, I would trust her to care for my family. This video was created to introduce you to what is a very interesting way of thinking about both learning and teaching. It's demonstrating something called an Entrustable Professional Activity, or EPA. We will cover what an EPA is, why it's important, what's involved in using EPAs during a rotation, and what trust has got to do with it. Here's a multiple choice question. What is an EPA? A, a unit of professional work. B, what's actually done during the clinician's day. C, something that can be assigned, measured, and observed. D, that same something that a supervisor could trust a learner to do independently or unsupervised. E, a way to teach and assess learners. F, all of the above. It's no surprise that each of these describes an EPA. Let's review some concrete examples. These are some of the 33 EPAs for obstetrics and gynecology. Managing labor and childbirth. Performing complex cesarean sections. Providing consultation for patients with gynecologic conditions. And performing major laparoscopic gynecologic procedures. Each EPA is a unit of work and outlines something an obstetrician and gynecologist actually does. You could also imagine your resident being trusted to function independently for each of those activities. And so, it's something on which a learner could both be observed and assessed. Why might an EPA be important in the context of teaching and learning? Two reasons are, number one, confirming progress in performing key tasks of our specialty, and two, for feedback. First, Let's talk about confirming a resident's progress. In CBD, we want to be sure that each resident can competently perform key tasks. By tracking them, our competency committee will have information to confirm who is making progress as expected and to identify early on if someone is needing some more support in a given area. Residents are to achieve and teachers are to ensure that the EPAs are achieved by the end of each stage of training. An EPA represents the integration of a large number of competencies into a manageable number of activities for learners. And they also enable supervising faculty to meaningfully assess during the training program. Remember the other reason? The second one is for feedback. For years, learners have been telling us that they want more meaningful and helpful feedback. Feedback is one of the most effective ways to support a resident's growth and development. The most specific and meaningful feedback is based on what is directly observed. It is directly observing a specific EPA task and providing meaningful feedback about it. So what's trust got to do with it? The more a supervisor directly observes a learner and the more likely and easier it is to confirm that he or she trusts the learner to perform an act independently or unsupervised. And so, to bring it back to where I began, not just for learners by the end of their training, but as a general professional goal, shouldn't we all aspire to be a clinician our colleagues would trust to take care of their family members?